Hey guys, welcome, and we're early August, peak of summer, and we're doing something a little bit different. You know, we're getting away from all those big brown trout and dry fly eats, changing that up for a small creek, small cutthroat trout, and dry fly eats. <laughs> exactly, it's a gorgeous summer day. It's a perfect place to come and spend it. And guys, on this, on this particular video, we really just get into a simple setup that we're using and we really talk about where the fish are going to be. Um, you know, there's, there's some really neat niche habitat where you've got little slots and troughs and you've got a little bit of structure and you've, we're also talking about exactly where these fish are going to hold when it comes to depth and how fast the current is. Well, Amelia should say that she worked that kind of water. I, I, I got lucky and I had two little sections of canyon water which is a little bit deeper and you know as it happens by the time August rolls around every year if it's not waist deep you're not going to have the bigger fish. Well guess what I got that water she didn't guess who caught the 8, 9, 11 inch cutthroat trout today. So, <laughs> Yay, <yeah. good> <laughs> <laughs> no, a lot of fun lot of but fun. the point of the video is hey if you haven't gotten into fly fishing, dry fly fishing this is a great video to understand that all you need is a 9 foot 4x leader and practice hitting the little spots as you're saying anything where there's a depth change or a color change that signifies water that's a little bit deeper in rocks and whatnot that's all just watch where we pull these fish out of don't catch every one and some of them are literally this big some of them are that big the point is be a strike junkie dry fly fisherman and just go have fun exactly guys and as well keep in mind the, the little things like approach and position because even though they're small fish you still want to apply some of the stuff that we do teach you and on that note it would be wonderful if you want to come over and you support the content that we do come on over to our membership group at patreon and join us there we have all kinds of great content really our best work if you love our content and want to support us while viewing and experiencing our best media and educational content our patreon channel is alive with content by joining our site, you gain access to weekly producer's notes supporting every YouTube feature, as well as access to our topical short courses and access to our Fly Fishing Trout Streams Master Course. Our Patreon page is a perfect exchange where we provide our best and most in-depth work to improve your trout stream fly fishing while supporting our work so we can continue to develop and grow our media. Well, I haven't seen anything rise yet, which is kind of strange, but we'll go down and have a look where we parked a couple kilometers upstream. There was a pool with a couple nice fish in it, but here I am. I think I'm going for a butt slide down this thing. I guess we'll go and find out if there's anybody. Oh, there he was. The old black beetle. There he was. Had to be six. <laughs> ah, boy. Ah, he missed it. He missed it. That's at least four inches. <laughs> Oh yeah, where did he come from? Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Where did you come from, big boy? Ah, that's that's gorgeous. I'm sitting here expecting four, 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 five, six inches, and a and a ten, eleven comes out. Hey, wicked, nice, buddy, nice. <laughs> boy, that guy, he looks so much bigger, way bigger when he took my fly. That was like, ooh, and I was going at 17, 18, and no, it was not 18, I'll tell you that much. Get my feet under me, start right there. Oh yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> A couple fish came on that one, there we go. I suspect if I put this right back in there. Oh, two, two fish came after that one too. Um, I think we, there's more coming too. That's awesome. Little black beetle. Whoop, whoop. There you go, buddy. 
Um, yeah. So what do you say to this? Um, you just say smack it in there and see if that third guy comes up. Yeah, he did. Okay, how about if we go up here? That's the fish. There you go. Yeah, there's 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 cutthroat trout here. And that's pretty much cutthroat in a nutshell. <laughs> um, just wow. This guy just rose. Will he eat it? Right there. There he was. He'll eat it. He'll eat it. Yeah, there's another one. Okay, you get the point here, right? How about this right here? There he is. Whoop, whoop. Yeah, so it's that straight ahead with cutthroat. Oh, right in front of me. Yeah. Now, you got a want as well. So let's just go up here, okay? Place it there. There he is. Woo -hoo -hoo. <laughs> that was fun. There you go. Gorgeous little high country cut. Barbless beetle. Way to go. Thank you. And when you're walking through this stuff, you see my foot here. It's just literally find a spot behind a rock and step up, get your foot. Next, just get your foot, get your planting. Next, up. You don't want to step on that because that's going to be slippery right there. Stick your foot right to the base of that rock right there and step up. It's okay to feel your foot around over here where the cracks are. You'll get a step and step. Next one, just right along the rocks here. Just get right in the back end of that rock. There's a crack right where the interface between gravel and that rock is. Step up. I'm looking for the next one. And once you get the feel, you don't have to look. I'm doing this a long time, guys. You don't have to look eventually. You're just kind of moving, feeling with your feet, and just moving around. And that way you can just get to here, plunk that, Really, there should have been a cutthroat right there, right? Boo! And this is the thing about the old burn on this creek. Uh, about 15 years ago, there was a big forest fire. And what happens with forest fires is the old wood eventually comes down. And you get into these choke points and these canyon, box canyons, and the water will hammer through here. Yeah, you can go over top of this stuff and, and, and get yourself to the plunge pool on the other side, but why break your leg? Walk around, take the time. And in this case, I see a little path right through here. Again, they'll feel with your legs, feel with your feet. And there's no point in going over top of loose, down, dead, rotten wood if you can come through here, find a series of hard rocks to walk on, get firm, firm, go over there. Why, why, why straddle that? Just come off over the rock to here, right? Keep it simple, do the safe thing. You don't have an accident. You don't fall and break your head or break your leg. And you can just come in and catch a fish. <laughs> oh, three or four fish there. There he is. Whoop, 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 whoop. Sorry, little button. I'm just gonna work along this edge here. Bound to be somebody around. I got to hit the water though. <laughs> yeah, there's going to be a fish or two here. There he was, right over top of my beetle. Oh, he refused my beetle. Oh, he took my beetle. Oh, he refused it and he nosed it. <laughs> There's a classic. Oh, let it go. Uh, <laughs> I can't set the hook on that. That's just mean. Yeah, four. Four. So that's a better fish. And that's what we set the hook into. We wait for the for the take, the confirm that, and then we and we land that fish. Wicked. Gorgeous little bugger. Oh, barbless fly is already out. Cool. Come on, little button. There you go, guys. Whoop. Wicked. Okay, let's see if let's see if his twin brother is still in there. Oh, little guy, out you go. Ah, let it go, barbless hook. Thank you. 
It's just a strike junkie thing. So guys, this is absolutely anything that anybody can do. A beetle, I've got a, well, it doesn't really matter. I'm over lined a 12 foot long or 11 foot long leader down to 4X. It's just a beetle. Uh, any kind of beetle in a size kind of 12 to 16 inch range. Just pick off the pocket water and just have fun. Literally smack it in there, let them come and eat. You're gonna miss all sorts of fish because they're gonna right over top of it. But it's really just creepy. Get out there, beetle, short leader, make it 4X, maybe five if you're on a pressure piece of water. And just get out there and look at this. I mean, this is absolutely gorgeous. Every pool's got, you know, four, five, six, ten fish just, you know, they're active. And it's just fun to pool because we're out here middle of August, uh, middle of summer. It's hot, the water's cool, but the fish are going to be stacked into plunge pools. They're looking for not just oxygen, but overhead cover. That stuff down there didn't produce right now because, well, these fish know they're exposed. So they're coming into the deeper stuff. Again, the old waist deep thing kicks in. Plunge pool, overhead broken water cover and oxygen with a constant source of food coming in and guess what's going to happen on a cutthroat trout stream little guy oh i like this oh yeah oh <laughs> it was fun watching him come up oh I'm not used to such tiny fish on the end of my line. <laughs> oh yeah, there's a little guy. <laughs> I'll toss a few in here, guys. Oh, out you come. <laughs> They're sweet little cups, so that's for sure. And off he goes. Yeah, there's possibly not a prettier stream than some of these little cutthroat trout streams, guys. They are gorgeous. Shorten it up, get it a little closer. Anybody? Nah, that's okay. How about right at the head? Nope. Okay. This should above me. Oh yeah. He rolled right over top of it. <laughs> oh, yep. There's a lot of that. A lot of those seven, maybe seven inches. Nobody hiding in those rocks. Okay, I'm gonna go left over here. Are you ready? Tell me when. Yep. He was there. And again. Holy smokestacks. Whoa. No. <laughs> Come on. Little button. You're way too small for this. Whoa. Whoa. Look at you. This is a cool little spot, guys. No. I did not want to set into him. How about up closer to that rock? Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> I lost my friggin' balance as I swung that friggin' trout across. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah that's a better slightly better fish oh yeah <laughs> huge aj <laughs> look at him though look at his tiny little slash oh back in the water you go you can see guys even in this I'm trying to get myself on the side of the current that I'm casting to. You know, again, it's just trying to eliminate drag wherever possible. How about right here? I bet that's full of little guys, but 
Oh yeah. No, see, he's not that little. That's the funny. Some of the slightly bigger fish today are coming out of the real fast stuff. Broken bottom and the fast stuff. Yeah, sweet, sweet little trout. Okay, and yeah. here we go. Oh, yeah. There she be. Right on the edge, guys. <laughs> so that's a good looking pool, guys. Dave's gone up high to look in there, see what he sees. It's funny because from my angle, I see a couple of, you know, bigger slab rocks surrounded by a fair bit of fine gravel. So I don't know, I would suspect maybe more up towards the head where there's some slightly bigger broken rock, but I'm hoping Dave says, oh yeah, I can see one down there. Okay, from there? Oh yeah, there he is. Now I knew there'd be something up in there. It's kind of what I guessed. Broken rock. Just, now fish. Two fish I here. saw that, yep. I was just about to say the same thing. Oh, there he comes. He's following. Yeah, that's a, be that's a better one. Well, that's my biggest cutty on this little stream, guys. Really, really just a beautiful fish. Healthy, beautiful fish. Ready? Okay, guys. So you hear Amelia talking a lot about the rock slab stuff. This whole thing is just shelf rock. And you can tell that's gonna go right into the creek. And it offers some current break, but not heaps. And usually it's the rock angles in and that interface, that interface is where the fish quite often will be. And that's just because that's the depth. Uh, current breaks in the bottom of the rock. And that's about the only place they can be on this stuff. It's actually not my favorite water. Rarely do I catch lots of fish uh, unless it's slower water. If it's fast water, causeway like this is right here, that guy hit pretty quick because that was right in the prime depth with a rock in the bottom. Will he come up again? There, that's a little guy. There's two fish there. Right in the prime, prime, greenest, greenest water. And that green just tells me that it's the deepest water, it's probably the slowest water, and the fish are just sitting in there. But when I say two fish, five and five and a half inches long, Right? Now as we get up here, you read the water, that water up there turns greeny blue with some broken rock on the bottom. Well, what do you think is going to happen there? He looked, he looked, keep looking, eat it. <laughs> Little guy kept flashing on it. But that's a nine incher I'm not going to catch. <laughs> there he is, I stand corrected. That is a nine incher I'm gonna catch. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Gorgeous fish. Over. You're not grabbing, you're just cradling in your fingers. Just cradle it in your fingers. Two, three seconds, four seconds, barbless hook comes out in the water. Okay guys, so the big thing with this shelf coming off there, right that intersection of that rock slab coming down and the bottom is going to angle like that so there's a v on the bottom like that well kind of like that where that rock slab and the gravel intersect if you have broken rock in it good if there's really defined breaks in the rock slab good if you don't like this bad you're only going to get it where the deepest bluest greenest water is and that's why as we come up here right in here that's why those two fish were sitting in there and that's why that one uh, you know, big nine, 10 inch cutthroat was sitting right there. And you just want to line up your rod and put it boop, right in there, right off that seam. And that's where you're going to get the fish. And you just got to pop it in there. And that's why you want the nine foot liter uh, 4X. Keep your rod, just a little cast like that. And just keep your fly there. Keep it coming down that seam. And you're going to get a reaction on a cutthroat trout stream. Okay. So just work the edges of the fast water seam in the green. And somebody should eat, oh, there he was, little guy. Inside even more. Oh yeah, there he is. That's the fish we want, everybody. 
And that is the prime spot for that fish. Gorgeous fish, nice. <laughs> Not huge, but that's the habitat limitations. And just a stunning little fish. Okay guys, so you might've noticed one thing between Amelia's fishing and mine. I'm seeing and catching slightly bigger cutthroat. And by bigger, I mean eight, nine, 10 inches, maybe 11. And Amelia's catching three to maybe eight or nine inches. And what was the difference? Well, it's all in the habitat though. I basically have, I fished first and it was a, a gorgy pocket with this kind of water right here. And, and this is my second um, session. Her water was all little pockets in kind of braided shallower water. Absolutely a loaded, not loaded, but absolutely loaded with opportunity. I'm just hitting this, that spot. Little depressions where fish could hold. I've had stuff where fish have to be. As we get on in the summer and the water levels have come from, you know, well above my rod and gushing through here and dropping down uh, basically to here. Those fish, the bigger fish are looking for that overhead cover, deeper water, and it, you know, they may drop to the bigger river or they may actually spend the winter in this kind of stuff. So, you know, it, we're already, it, it's early 8th of August. We're starting to think about winter already. These fish are going, hmm, there's only so much habitat, guys. I have to stay there. And if that's not deep enough, then I'm gonna have to drop right out to the bigger river. But that's the difference between what Amelia's fished and what I've fished. Uh, heaps of opportunities, but I'm gonna catch the bigger fish just cause I've lucked into the canyon pool stuff. that wind today yep. and that's part of a day um, really 30, is. 33 degrees celsius which oh, is yeah. high 80s no humidity no rain for so long yeah and it's dry 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 guys yeah, not only do we have to be aware of warm tree uh, stream temperatures but we also have to be aware hey it's bone dry out here there's going to be fires don't be the cause of the fire because oh, yeah. ungodly percentage high percentage of forest fires are caused by us uh, sparks or flames or leftover camp yeah. fires. Yeah, you know, as much as you want to do that kind of stuff, guys, to make your vacation holiday fun, you know, it, it's just so not worth it because you got you got to listen to them. No fires is no fires. The ban is the ban, and because yeah, you know, it, it can block us out of actually going to enjoy the area. Well, it's funny because we're you know we're we're literally in an old <laughs> burn. If you look as far as the eye can see, up valley all the way around, that burned out. 15 years ago and you know the community of Crow's Nest Pass, Hillcrest, they were staring at flames oh, yeah. for a long time that summer and it's scary so. Yeah and when yeah I mean if you experience it at all when you've been pushed out of your community and you don't know what the fate of your house is going to be and your property it's pretty scary stuff. Yeah. So. 